As a pastor, he wants to be faithful before God and to his word, I share this today. Now, the seven distinctives of a wise Christian. They're always wanting to learn more. They always are hungering and thirsting after how they can be more in the will of God. Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, he said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. I wonder when you do a quick assessment of yourself, you say, Do you need to thirst after God's righteousness? You might say, I want more of his love. But are you hungry and thirsting after doing things wrong? Second attribute of a wise Christian is their teacher. Very teaching. Ready to learn. I heard of a man, 80 years of age, who enlisted in a Bible college in Bible as early as time. Still learning. Still learning. Those people are getting older like me by the day. Some of you are very young. I look out there and you look so young. But when you get older like you, you've got to be really careful that you don't think, oh, I know all that. I've done it. Ooh, be careful. Hunger and thirst. Be teaching. Wise Christians are always attentive to God's leading. They've got their antenna up. That's why I say it. Thirdly, they're thankful, grateful. Wise Christians are good company. They're good people to be with. Because they've got a purpose in life. They know who they serve. I love being with wise Christians. Fourthly, they're willing to stand alone with the cross. They just don't pick up when they come to church. Whether they're the only person in the whole office building that will live to Jesus Christ. Even if they're the only Christian member of parliament, they will live to Jesus Christ. Even if they're the only Christian person in the police force, they'll live to Jesus Christ. We used to say to our kids, even if you're the only Christians in the school, you live to Jesus. He will bless you. Amen? Amen. So they're willing to stand alone. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose, dare to make a life. Where are you today? Church, where are you today? Are you ready to be odd for God? When the opportunity is there just to cheat a little bit, do you take it? When the opportunity is there just to bend the rules a little bit, you say, oh, he's a cheap gobbler too. Oh, oh, oh. Or do you say, no, it's wrong, I'm not going to do this. That's what the uh, wise Christians say. Wise Christians are self-starters. They just don't wait to be asked. They see a need and do it. They see an opportunity to honour God and they do it. They dare to make a difference. Wise Christians are God pleases first, not self first. Wise Christians, wise Christians are people that please God when someone's looking and when no one is looking. They're God pleases, not people pleasing for self pleasing. Sixthly, they're quick. Say so. They're quick to repent. They don't live week after week with a guilty conscience and don't know what to do with it. That's why so many people are going to counselling. They're filled up with a guilty conscience and they don't know that they can come to God and say, Lord, God, please forgive me. I want to learn from this and grow. And the Holy Spirit burns that conscience to give you a question. There's wonderful counselling with different. And seventy. Wise Christians have a life goal. I went to have a survey today and we said, what is your life goal? They did that in America amongst uh, high school students. 73% of the students said, I just want to be famous. And the next question, what do you want to be famous for? I don't care as long as I'm famous. <laughs> How shallow is that? And it's the problem no. of the previous generation. Look at me, generation. What do, what, what can I look, what, what can I do? Can I be famous? God looks on the heart. People look on the heart. What we are on the heart really is good. If you're a wise Christian, I'll tell you what you'll be like. You'll be aiming to be fruitful, standing for God. Thank you, Lord. You gave me gifts, the opportunities, the talents. Thank you, Lord. You gave me so many. Windows of opportunity. Thank you. But I was able to walk through nearly all of them. Is that right, Lord? Or is that you missed a few? But you did well. Come on. You'll be faithful. You'll reach many, many people for Christ. You'll be unashamed to be able to share the gospel of Jesus. Then you'll take
take the Great Commission very seriously is to go to all the world and preach the gospel. Teach them all the things I taught you that they might have the right to have the opportunity. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, they, uh, before they sinned, the terrible was happy glory, it was just beautiful, it was heaven on earth. Sin came into the world, and you guilt, you fear, and you sin. And God called them in the end after they fell. God said, Adam, where are you? Adam hid himself because he knew that sin separates from God. Sin still separates from If we have unresolved sin in our life and we've never taken it to the Lord, it's still separating us from God. The Bible says in Psalm 66, verse 18, if we regard sin in our hearts, the Lord won't do that. So the best thing we can do is say, Cleanse me, cleanse my heart, my mind. I want to live in, in a right place. Where are you? Men of the Where are you? God is saying, I want to be loved and faithful. I want my very best blessing on you, but you need to surrender. You need to be in that and let me work with you. If you're willing to do that, would you stand? Only if you're willing, don't let me compel anybody. Only if you're willing to say, Lord, here I am, I want to live fully in your Lordship and your direction. Your glory, I want to live in your glory. <coughs> Let's bow. Father, we thank you on this fifth anniversary that you give us such a wonderful parable as this one. One of the wonderful things in your faithfulness, Father God, is that you don't keep secrets. You tell us what's been what gone on in the past. You tell us the failings of those in the past, but how they were restored. And you tell us what you expect in the future, the big picture. You tell us that there will be a culmination of the world as we know. And Lord, all the signs are ecologically, population growth, just tension and stress all around the globe. Lord, it would seem as though we could be, could possibly be getting close. But we don't know. But Lord, we just don't know how long our hearts are going to be weak. We want to be faithful. We want to be right before you. We want to live each day as it could be our life. And Lord Jesus, I just pray for those that are standing today that, Lord, that you will bless them for making a public stand today. Maybe in a clear, truly, and authentic declaration of their heart's desire to live under the Lordship of Jesus. Lord, for those that are not quite ready for this kind of uh, demonstration or response, Lord, I just pray that you will lead them as well. You love us all equally. And Lord, we just thank you. God so loved the Lord that he gave his only son, and he's still with us. The least will not perish, but have everlasting life. We want to say, Lord, thank you for the privilege of living in this country. Thank you, Lord, for all you provided us. Homes to live in, beds to sleep in, food to eat. A billion people don't know what they'll eat tomorrow or around the world. But Lord, you're so blessed. Help us, Lord, to be thankful and to be able to appropriate all the blessings the truth of goodness, that we might be in front of the glory, fruitless, and demonstrate faithfulness to you and to us. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Please.